G'day and welcome to the Different Owners. I'm Execute, and I'm joined today by Algrid, and our special guest is Space Tech. Voice in the Void. Oh. Yeah, Voice in the hello, Void. Hello. How are you doing, Space Tech? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Doing good, doing good. Yeah, so I um I only got into to Star Citizen early last year, um, but mm. you know I fell straight down the rabbit hole. I uh, got totally consumed by uh by mm. by the game, and I, I got inspired enough to kind of start making my own content about it because mm. I realized that there weren't you know enough guides out there that talked about how like an FPS weapon, for example, functions in the game today, mm. and like you know what are the ranges, what is the damage, like how many shots to kill, stuff like that. So I decided, you know what, I I can do that myself. So yeah, uh, here I am. Mm -hmm. He came across so, to, question for you. He, hang on, he just came across to me and Algrid is very um stats based and we were like, Oh, hmm. he reminded us of, of of Hayes from back in the day. And so um me and Algrid were very secretly in that uh, content creator summit that was on during the weekend, just going, Oh yeah, we'll we'll do a show with this guy and we'll damn, do a show with this we'll guy. Damn, <laughs> damn. So you're gonna We were doing it we were back, you know, like Santa Claus, checking having hmm. a list and checking it twice, you know. Yeah. Well, it's a good so, thing I was able to wake up in time for that then. Yeah. What was uh, your... I, I do have a question for you, Go for and it. that is, mm -hmm. how bad have you got Pokemon Syndrome? Oh, oh my god, don't even get me started. I, I have it. Luckily, I can't afford it, you know? <laughs> so so uh, I... I... <laughs> I, I very much fell down the whole um, CCU game uh, rabbit hole as well. Uh, so thanks, thanks to the Infra Runners especially, I, mm. I ended up just buying my starter pack. So I, I can say I've never bought a standalone ship, mm. um, but but I but I may own three or four pages of CCUs. <laughs> well, so uh, and doing, I... a, doing a fix my fleet with you would not be very good because it'd just be here's my ship. Right. <laughs> yeah, mm. here is my one hundred I. You got to be very patient to do that, but it is the best way to be, unfortunately. So, all right. So, um, how many LTI tokens do you have? Oh, uh, I've got three. Mm. That's yeah, my bad. That that those those are standalone, I suppose. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Well, with that, then, um, if you like this type of content, don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. We've been hearing from a lot of people that they're not getting all our videos, mm. and if you want all our videos, that is what you have to do. But today's episode. And I can't remember what I titled it. Uh, is will manufacturers' um, repair prices be different? And I think after our talk today, it is very evident that is more than likely what it's going to be. Not to give the game away, but I probably have just given the game away. But yeah. Um, so yeah, to our voice yeah. point. After you after you bagged us out for occasionally stealing the conversation and the mm -hmm. and, and and the you know the main point. And well, I I'm going to say oh, something sorry, here. Well, you, well, yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but um. I was in the car with my mum um, a couple of months ago because this, this has been, we've we got a brainstorming document where we put in things of things that we want to talk about. And I was, my mum was talking about her BMW and uh, literally said, oh man, this car runs so well, but man, if it ever breaks down, it costs me a fortune to get repaired. And I just kind of had this thing twig in my head where I went, wow, that's kind of like Origin is like BMW and then Drake. And then I just started thinking about, well, could this be a thing where there's all these different repair prices? And so, yeah, inevitably, my mum finally bared fruit and gave me an episode. Uh, but yeah, and I'm I'm shaking my head because I've actually said this to execute multiple times, multiple mm. times, and just ignores me. Just... Yeah, well, just like my mum, I don't so... listen to you or my mum, but this time I am just deciding <laughs> to listen to my mum. So yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, the, the lesson there is listen to your elders. Your fossils, uh, yes. Yeah, no. That's what I call it. No, 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 I execute. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I execute. You, you, Al Gary's got a point here. You really should listen to, 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 to us old folk. I'll probably get more cat girls if I listen to you. That's what you're telling me, aren't you? But yeah, uh, that's fine. De definitely, definitely that's the case, execute. Mm. All right, now we've made sufficiently made Space Tech very awkward. Mm -hmm. uh, we can move <laughs> on. Um, but I think we... We haven't done this, right? Uh, so this is all, you know, live when we're doing this. But I kind of want to go through the different manufacturers mm. and kind of speculate somewhat. And this is going to be a very kind of speculatory episode um, on where we kind of think they're all going to be. And obviously, let's just lay it out. You've got Origin at one end and you've got Drake at the other. But kind of where... So where do all the others fall? <laughs> yeah, like, because, well, my first brain... Like, if we start at the top and work our way down, so we'll start at Origin mm. and go backwards, I would assume... RSI would be the next one down. Would you guys kind of agree with that, yeah. or? Yep. What about you, Space? Yeah, I, 
I, yeah, I think so as well. I think RSI has kind of always struck me as, you know, the number two when it comes to that ordering of like luxury mm. and, and polish and things like that. Uh, I mean, obviously the wire snaking across the constellation might not speak to that, but even just, you just look inside the Phoenix, right? It's mm. clear that they've got an eye to material. And I think material is, is fundamentally what's going to drive costs when it comes to repair. Yeah, I agree. And yet, and yet, RSI only have one luxury ship. Everything mm. else is more industry based. and that makes me go, maybe not. Um, well, it's a certain style of it. Like that, 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 especially the Mantis. Mantis has a really mm. good style. And we, are, we do have five more RSI ships coming. We also know that they've got the bigger military. So I think they kind of bridge this line between like Anvil and Origin. That, that's kind of where, where I think it sit. And I'd probably say Anvil's next after them and then Aegis. But that, that's where my brain goes. You my guys correct me if you think I'm wrong. My gut feeling would be Origin Banu because of the way Banu like to show up their luxury and show up their luck, their, their, um, I didn't even their wealth. I didn't even consider aliens. You were totally correct. Yes. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I, know yeah. I, I do wonder if we end up, you know, similar to with the pledge store, we end up paying a premium or an alien tax on repairing alien ships. Makes just a lot because of. if they use it. They've got yeah, to bring the parts. Materials or anything like that. Yeah, and the, the parts may, may have to be shipped in from further away. You're completely right. So now I actually go back to even the human stuff. If you've got to transport it from where Origin builds it to somewhere else, do parts cost more because they've got to be transported further? Ooh, well, now I, we're getting I, complex. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll raise the issue with my brother and his old Audi. Because mm. my brother used to have an Audi Fox. He loved his Audi Fox. He loved the look of it, loved the feel of it. He always said, oh, it looks like a Merc. And, you know, at certain angles it did. But in the end, he had to get rid of it because whenever it broke down, regardless of the part, it had to come from Germany. And that meant that was why your mum's BMW is so expensive to repair. The parts have to come from Germany. And this is no different. So if you've got a manufacturer that is only based in Terra and you've mm. got to ship parts to a brana and mm. you know one of the unaligned systems you can expect the cost of that part to be significantly more let me throw this back at you then though but you would also um kind of like it's changed a bit since back in the day like with older cars they do have parts that are made for certain manufacturers in other countries now mm -hmm. just because of that repair right. stuff so you would have to imagine and i'll just use the terra earth example is it if it is made in Terra, they probably got a manufacturer on Earth that can make them as well. We've also got the benefit of, you know, a thousand years in the future and 3D printing type stuff. Maybe they can just make it. I don't know. Yeah, but then I, 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 I almost think that um, manufacturing will end up following where those materials are rich as well. Mm -hmm. So if Origin uses, you know, mineral A a lot, it's possible that they would set up further repair stations or manufacturing stations for those replacement parts in those systems yeah. as well. So if you're proximus to any of those, uh, mm. in any of those systems, it might bring down that cost over time. And, and something like those bigger manufacturers too, you'd think they would be along bigger supply lines, like more frequently, you know, you know like in the real world, how, what happened with Suez Canal and stuff like that. When, when that was closed down, we all felt it. You know, it's the same yeah. type of thing. So, yeah, that, that, they are some things that are on the fringes of here because we are speculating, but they are all things that will probably bear fruit uh, down the line. But then here's another here's another spanner to the works, which I literally just thought of, mm. is if you're not near an Origin workshop, but you're near an Asperia workshop, they may actually be able to manufacture the part for most ships because there you go. that's what they do. They, mm. they specialise in building those rare ships and manufacturing the parts that are needed for those rare ships mm. or, and working from the blueprints. Yep. Yeah. And given their history is having that repository of all the blueprints of all the ships, that could put them into a position to actually be the manufacturer of, of rare or hard to get parts. That's a good so, point. Right. Um, and, and if... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I was just going to say that um, I, I wonder also, right, where... Uh, if quanta, you know, the, the the system of managing the economy will play into this where, you know, if we do end up seeing a lot of a certain type of manufacturer, especially let's say, you know, alien ships are primarily found in some subsector of the universe, right? Um, if that's the case, then I wonder if costs for that end up going down or up over time based on how that how the dynamic economy responds to that. Like, will it be that, oh, you know what, we we find ourselves constantly needing Drake parts in this part of the system and so or in this part of the universe. And so costs are going to go up over time over there. 
can they artificially inflate the AI to make it seem like Ship X is more popular than it actually is because players aren't buying it? <laughs> I probably you know what I mean? Like, I just thought of that. Like, they could go, oh, yeah, the, the economy really loves this ship, so you should buy it. But no one's buying it because it doesn't work properly or whatever. It's because the AI are buying it, but yeah. they could. Like, you, you think of the, sh the number of ships. Like, I think we well, we should see whole series ships all over the place. Yeah. That should be the most, you know, the whole sea is said to be the most ubiquitous ship in mm. the UAE. I, I yeah. would honestly say I, I, I do see MISC as one of those, I mean, like, it's a high-end industrial um, mm. but, but, and in a weird way, I don't think it is essentially a line. I do think there is kind of a split between, uh, high end, like, like, like it, it, mm. it's circular in a weird way because like industry is similar in level to military, but how do you judge that? And that's what, yeah. like when I, when we say origin and Drake, I do think it's, it, it's not exactly a straight line. I think it's, it's hard to explain. It's almost like a yeah. diamond or something, you know, because it, yeah. there are ones that are almost equal, like, um, how do I think about this? So, so, like, you could almost look at a military one and an industry one, and you, as I said earlier, that they could in fact be equal, but they're they're not. You and, know what I mean? Because they're different. And there's all there's also that uh, economy of scale as well. So, mm -hmm. ship that is being mass produced, so the whole sea ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Yeah. You would expect yep. parts of the whole sea to be significantly cheaper than say even the from the whole E. Yeah, I was gonna say even from the same manufacturer, like a razor versus a, a a whole series would be different as well you know an endeavor Definitely. um you know it, it really depends and and the other part that well the thing i wanted to talk about too that i was going to say before you talk about what you brought up look i don't want to i don't want to steal your thunder uh star tech so uh, space tech <laughs> i said star tech space tech uh was the the one that you put forward which was the components versus no, okay. Uh, the whole versus the components. I, I will just say it. I'm not. I'm not stealing anything. You came up with that idea, but yeah, you you brought this up too, didn't you? When it comes to repair, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when it comes to it, right? They've talked about replacing components in ships, and we know that components obviously are going to have different grades, different manufacturers, so on. That's obviously going to impact the price. Um, mm -hmm. What will end up mattering as well, though, is how those components are installed, the way those wiring systems are set up. So to install X, Y, and Z components in, say, a Cutlass Black may not look the same as installing those components in a MISC. Um, for, for example, the Prospector, right? Mm. Putting those quantum drives in might come with different costs. Replacing them might come with different costs, even though they're the same component. So and there's that split between hull and components. I wonder also, so say you have... And I'm just because it's a more transparent one. If I have a Drake ship and an Origin ship, right, and it's the same component, does it wear faster? Does it mm -hmm. not need as much maintenance? You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Like you can see the depth that this game could have quite quickly if it was if that as well. So it's not just the repair prices; it's how long it lasts, how how often mm -hmm. I need to maintain it as well. And and you quite honestly look at Drake. Everyone you know says those jokes about their armor and stuff like that but you look at it and you go i would imagine it deteriorates at a more rapid rate but it costs less and then obviously in the origin it's the complete opposite where and, it, where it costs a fortune but yeah but but does it almost never if we look at the way we've seen components so far we've seen military the racing the oh, what is it luxury the, the, no, the military racing industrial and civilian and civilian yeah, civilian yep but even within those brands, we've got, even within those four categories, we've got different brands and we've got A grade, B grade, C grade, mm. D grade, E grade, yep. as well as the different sizes. And so you can see that CIG certainly seems to be going down that line of the quality of the components impacting how long it survives. So an A grade component is supposed to last longer than an E grade component. Yep. Um, and he, even if it's inherent you know, in the, the purchase price too, yeah. you know, and then even even with the, the different classes, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a industry is supposed to be better than or last longer than say a racing, or a, yep. or a civilian, and so you've got, you've got two levels of this this la, you know the uh, ergonomics or the um, or, or, or obsolescence of of a part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that ties in with the armor and and the, the hull as well. The materials that are used on the hull, we know about the, uh, 80, the 890 is said to have really unique materials and that add strength and stuff, whereas the Drake ships are kind of 
that mm. be cobbled together. And, and the, the line is always, you know, they have paper thin mm. armor. Yeah, so I, I think said they don't have armor. I've just said it's thin. Mm. Yeah, it, 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 we can actually see a great example of uh, why it's possible that components will have different uh, different wear and tear on their components in the cutter. As you walk through the back of the cutter, you, you notice that the components are actually just exposed there on the right side. That's an area where cargo is going to be loaded in and out. That's an area where there's going to be people moving in and out, guns mm -hmm. moving in and out, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. That's not what you see on, say, the 100i, right, where those components are hidden away. There's, there's no doors, for example, on the, yeah. the Drake ships, as in the components, right? You go into yep. the, the Terrapin was the test bed for the, for the doors, so they've got doors and everything, but you know the um, 890 jump and um, thinking of the 400 eyes, the, the one I'm thinking of more recently, have those full panels that come up and down. You know, um, you go into the Redeemer, it's got doors on it, but Drake is like the you bottom go, of the barrel, no doors at all. You know, you go into yeah. a Constellation and you see a similar thing. They've often got the the panels that open and, and close, and you see more of them on the, on a Phoenix mm. rather than the other the other ones as well. Oh, yeah. So yeah, definitely. We certainly we certainly see that that development mm. of protection or from just miscellaneous damage. So that would impact wear and tear on the on components as well. So so there was another good point that uh, Space Talk brought up as well, and I'm just going to say it this time. I'm not silly or thunder, but this was your idea. <laughs> um, the cost of a, a crucible repairing a ship. And, and, and mm. so, you know, again, an Origin versus Drake. And, like, can it physically repair the Origin ship because... As Agred alluded to, it's got more elaborate or expensive components. So, do do they have to go get them, or you know, like, or or do they just do a patch job so it can? You know what I mean? Like, if a Drake's components and hull are more, because I think that's really what manufacturers are going to affect the most is the hull, right? If they can affect the hull um, and get repaired cheaper because they're just a cheaper and easier to find requirements does that mean there is a certain drawback to origin like we've all been saying there's this massive drawback because of the armor to drake for years right there is a strength to origin right it's made of rarer components it's so much harder to attack but when it does break that has to be a drawback surely when it eventually does it, you've gone from a position of strength to like a nightmare because it's just so much harder to get repaired so I put that to you guys. Do, do you see that there is there is strengths and weaknesses to both in my book? Mm. I, I think the big thing is an origin ship, you could probably let the repair, you know, way we often go to a station, you fly in, you do, I don't know about you, but I fly in, one of the first things I do is pull up a pull up repair module and repair my ship. Mm -hmm. On an origin ship, you can probably let that slide maybe 10, 20%, you know, let it, you know, you don't, uh, yeah, I'm still pretty good. A Drake ship, though, you're probably going to want to make sure you're doing that all the time because I reckon Drake ships are going to break down with almost free, just such a frequency that it's not going to be, it's going to be, oh, yeah, Drake ship broke down again, you know, whereas an Origin ship, you hear a break down, it's going to say, this guy doesn't look after his ship, you yeah. know, so. It's 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 gonna gonna be interesting to too to see where that kind of range is, isn't it? Because like if it's too frequent or too expensive, because let's be honest, that's the two metrics. Origin's too yep. gonna be too expensive and Drake is gonna be too frequently. What is that entire width gonna be? Right? So yeah, I don't know. And, and which yeah. manufacturer is the one that sits in the middle of that, which is the sweet spot? Yeah, I'd I, agree I with you. I was about on that. to say like you, you know that that there there's going to be folks, possibly me, who who make graphs about these things. You know, yeah, yeah. fly this for for fifty hours and see what, how how often I need to repair and how much it costs, and yep. you know we'll we'll find that sweet spot for sure. I, and 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 just um, sorry, I, go ahead. I was just going to say I kind of agree with Aaron. I'm sitting here. That is where it's going to be. Like that, those ships in the middle, like you know the Anvil, the Aegis, the the Misk. Yep. You know the, those which, ones in the middle. Which manufacturer do you think is going to be the perfect middle ship? Perfect middle company. I I don't I'm not entirely sure. It, it you know. You, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge and say RSI. Oh, no, but, well, the, one that's... the other thing I'm thinking right because we were talking before the show and, and one of the we, we, it is one of our points right. So so, so we, yep. I, I am skipping ahead here and I apologize, but we were talking about the Drake Carter and the thing you were saying, Agrid, is it's the most undrake ship they've ever done. So now my thinking is, what if it's not manufacturer specific? What if it's ship specific? Because you can have a yeah. much uh, like a terrapin versus a a, a a hornet, 
you know, yeah. like one's heavily armored, so it costs more. That's another point I've just brought up. We, we have, uh, I've got a couple of bullet points here that we, we want to talk about, but yeah, you can see where I'm going here, though, right? It's it's not yeah. just manufacturer specific. It is probably a ship by ship yeah. potential basis yeah. and, as well. And, and the cutter, the cutter is the one that does, as you said, really, really highlight that because mm. everyone has always said, CIG have always said, you know, you, you read the um, the March 2019. Uh, jump point article on the Corsair, and it that says three or four times it has less armor than the others. It's got paper thin armor. It's mm. time and time again when we've talked under, about when under, so have talked about under armored and but up gunned is is the term yeah, I remember. And, and they've yeah. commonly talked about you know the paper thin armor of Drake ships compared to the other ships in their class. And yet mm. when the Cutter came along, it was this is the most armored ship for its size, and and, it, it, and it's the most armored ship of. And it's undergun though. It's it's opposite. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. But in a good it, way. It, it's it's, uh, it's guns compare with a with a with a um with an Aurora. Like it, an Aurora can get four size ones. It's got two size twos. But the big difference, which is again another undrake characteristic, is it's got two fixed size ones, uh, torpedo missiles. Whereas say an Aurora has a rack which could be swapped out depending on the, the rack, you know, so an Aurora LN has a size four rack, so you could go mm -hmm. uh, size four, size three, size two, size one, you know. Space. Whereas the Drake mm. Carter is just stuck. Yep. You were going to say, sorry? Yeah, uh, I was saying like a, a couple of things, right? The first being like, yeah, it definitely might be ship specific. Like I think a great example of that is the Endeavor, right? Where yeah. we know that that cab module is going to be able to withstand a lot more, um, like say heat or pressure uh, compared to say the hull of a prospector. And mm -hmm. that might not just be the difference in, you know, like uh, hull thickness or something. It might be a different material altogether. So it might not be as, as straightforward. Mm. Um, and speaking of different materials, I think uh, to, to quickly touch on the Crucible again, yeah, I think it's completely possible that the way we talk about the cost of a repair might really change as we see more ship-driven repair because the cost may no longer be, you know, how much does it cost when I land at a platform and hit the repair button, but rather what kind and how much of a material does it use up from the Crucible? You know, it's ammo, so yeah, to speak. Absolutely. is going to differ from ship to ship and manufacturer to manufacturer. Okay. And then that also raises a question, which you just made me think of. If if you call up a crucible and he turns up and he says, "Yeah, look, I could give you a, a you know, I could I could repair your uh, eight ninety jump. I could use these components and give you a, you know, get you fully fixed, and it's going to cost you, you know, hundred thousand. Or I can use these components and do a patch job, or get you flying, get you moving, and it's going to cost you twenty thousand or thirty thousand. Which one do you want? Mm. Uh, and then, just because of the materials they're using in the repair could actually impact the, the quality. And then certain ships would need, you know, to say to get a, 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 a cutlass up to full spec may mm. only cost 40000 instead of the patchwork job. It costs cost you 5000 So you can see the cost the, of that repair to get out to top-notch is could you, impact as well. You can see the player choices there, though, because this player choice mm. is not just for the person getting the, the, the repair, but the person is the repairee. Because um, what what cargo components do you take out? If you're going out into pyro, oh, I'm more likely going to be doing Drake ships, so I will just take generalized stuff. But if you're going mm. at, around a certain area, you, you can certain, start to see the depth that this is going to create very, very quickly in not and just the ships that are affected. And it's one of the comments that, came up the other day when we were doing the um uh, uh the summit mm. um was the you know people's the, the discussion of when do you want the game and the thing we can do it quick or we can do it good and it's the same for ship repair isn't it exactly yeah, look, i can i can repair it for you i, I can do it quick <laughs> mm. yep and cheap 100 percent. but it's not going to be good or i can do it good and it's going to be expensive and it's that type of thing that i think will come into that economic gameplay as well so there's yeah, well, it's there's a lot the, more nuance than I think we were even thinking as we were talking before. Well, there's benefits to both because, like, do you mm. just get a patch job so you can go back somewhere else and get it repaired cheaper, but then you lose a bunch of time, or you just get them give you a full repair so you don't have to go back at all? You know that that yeah. that'll be a thing as well. So yeah, and I the, get a patch job, yeah. I can get back to my org, and, yeah. and we can do it for cheap, or you know, so. Yeah. And 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 I almost wonder how far you can go with the pairs. Can you a hundred percent like? show moon ready i don't think you'll ever get back to 100 percent. i think what mm. like the the second you take that ship, ship out the door it, it's going to deteriorate it's um, going to depreciate yeah, yeah. And, and eventually at some point you'll have to reclaim the ship get a new one 
I don't think you'll... It's like anything in life. Like, like a car eventually goes to end of life. You know, like I... Yeah. I um, this doesn't sound really weird, but I had, I had to replace my speakers the other week. Um, and they have the original Logitech logo from way, way, way back. It turns out my speakers were 17 years old. I think I got a really good run out of them, but um, yeah, and 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 I put a photo up in the Discord. And said, Look how old these are! They're still got the old logo, but like, it's the same thing. There will be, um, mm. you know, eventually if they do bring in new versions of ships, like we, we've talked about this algorithm where that they talked about bringing newer models in or rework stuff. We will actually probably see these people that are rare collectors of much older ships that they probably don't even fly anymore and they'll probably make like mm. their own little museum that you can go view and go, oh, this is the Connie from 10 years ago. Look how much yeah. it's changed and it's, and, yeah. I think there's an indication of that type of thing is something certainly a lot of people want. I know Disco would love that type of stuff because he wants his jalopy. He wants that old wrecked ship that you have to go mm. and find the bits and pieces for so you can build it. But, yep. you know, and that's that's kind of picking up that idea of the different models of ships. Now, you also had mm -hmm. uh, a point you were talking about earlier as well, Execute, which was another aspect that comes into the hull and components, and that was armour. Yeah. And how does armour impact this? So I did want to talk about armour, but I also wanted to talk about um, there was something you brought up, which was the, um, you were reminding me about the um, the Kraken and stuff where they weren't going to let them use certain components. But I guess we could talk about both of them at the same time, which is totally fine. Yeah, so, and I think both are related in, in, in the way we've discussed things already. So, yeah. yeah. So from my point of view, in returns to armor, there is still a lot up in the air. It is one of, um, like, like as I was saying to you guys before the show, there's a couple of things. For me, is is it location-based, which I think it is. We've seen a lot of photos that show it's always hexagons, and they're always like these thick, chunky tiles. And my thought process was, here's the two ways it can go. Location-based. So they've said things like um, an Aurora can't shoot capital class armor, but that doesn't mean a ship like an Ares can't come along, destroy all the armor, and then it's shootable. But then on top of that, if they just use the armor to cover core components, you get heavily armored ships like a Perseus, but then you get a lighter armored ship like, say, an, a Hornet, right? So I, mm. it, it shows you that depth. So if it's location-based, they don't do different types, or the other option is different types, right? Um, and I... From what I see in the photos, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the location-based stuff because it seems to fill out a lot more nicely and you can see a reason for ballistics to be a thing, right? If a ballistic ship comes along, gets a couple of shots into that armor and they crack and eventually fall off, that also makes that a consumable, so they have to be repaired and replaced. You see where I'm going here pretty quickly, right? Yep. Um, and, and it, it, and it adds a... a way for the smaller ships to be able to do come in and do that damage so yeah and it's this spiders flying around could have could be a big help as well it's this really weird thing that mm. works and balances itself out because ballistics are all of a sudden great but they run out um armor is great but it runs out so so it's almost like the yin to the yang thing you got ballistics to armor right. to what lasers are to shields right and, it, and it's and it's all perfectly balanced in a really cool way and and to pick up your idea of, of armor being location based, we actually see elements of that already in game. Like mm. we see it specifically on the cutter, mm. where you can hit a button and its side panels come up and cover the side cockpit. You just gave me things. And we also know shield emitters that even shows location based stuff for shields. Mm. I didn't even thought of that. Definitely. Space, you're very quiet. Give us your thoughts. <laughs> I'm going to chuck you under the no, bus. No, I, I... Being here with me and Agrid, you have to speak the fuck up. Yeah, you just, you just like, have to. Just yeah. Fair, fair, fair enough. I will, I will learn. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I definitely think armor is a great balancing tool as well. You know, just even out outside of directly in combat, you can think of armor as you know a uh, a non replenishable source in the sense that it's possible that they mm. might decide that you know even crucibles cannot re put armor onto a ship that's lost it in a specific location or something like that. Mm. Or they could say that you know. Um, armor is extremely uh like heavy or large so mm. it takes up much more space in a crucible so like l yeah. l let's say that you were flying along uh you would then have to then you'd have to make a call as to how much armor do you want to travel with as you're flying around yeah it's and, it, it it's, it's interesting though like i was going back to that balancing like how you run out of ballistics you can if you can run out of armor because it gets destroyed so the advantage is infinite ammo in lasers and infinite shields 
that recharge, mm. but then limited ammo and limited armor. But they are far stronger, right? So it's this an initial versus sustained. It's yeah. it's all weirdly balanced. It works really well if you think it through. And, and I, I think there's other aspect of armor as well. Like we know the the Carrick is supposed to have that shield that comes over the cockpit. Now we know That's the true. cockpit, the cockpit glass is supposed to be transparent steel. Mm. So it's supposed to have the same strength as a hull. But if you're able to penetrate that with your weapon, that shield that comes down over the carrick actually gives it suddenly a better chance of survival for your crew if you're being mm. shot at because you've got to penetrate that armour first. Same with that, same with the, the cutter. Mm. The only two ships we know of at the moment that have any armour that covers any portion of the cockpit. Mm. I expect more to come. But we can also see the weight of the armour in terms of the Idris P, Idris yeah. M, uh, the Gemini and the uh, Starfarer in terms of the cargo capacity of those, mm. in, in terms of the difference those ships could have, because it was always said it was because of the armour that they had, that they had less cargo you've capacity. Just, you've just made me think of something like, like we have different manufacturers, right? So mm. if you, like where I was saying light, medium and heavy armour, maybe it's a little bit more lengthy than that as well. What if there are different manufacturers that have different mm. abilities? Like you could have armour that is better at... Um, Absorbing laser fire, you could have armor that is um, it's more resistant mm. generally overall, so it, it's more like a heavy armor, it just lasts longer, you know. But then you could have ones that are you know um, better at you know like absorbing ballistics and stuff like that. So I actually think, like realistically, knowing all the um, manufacturers in this game, that makes the most sense to me. Have different and, armor manufacturers. It, yeah, and, I think it really depends. Components. So go in space. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I guess it really depends on, you know, how many knobs CIG wants to be able to tune uh, combat as effectively as possible without yeah. making it too complex for somebody who wants to just get into the game and, you know, go pew pew in space. Um, no. I think there there's definitely a balance to be struck there. You've hit a nail on the head there because that, that, that as, as a designer, I could totally see them releasing a new manufacturer to stop fill gaps and stuff like that and, yeah. and, and also make things limited or, you know, like fix problems that they've introduced that they, they can go, oh, a new manufacturer brought out such and such and it fixes all this shit. So, um, yep. yeah. Uh, but with, to pick up the point you were making, it's about armor and, the, and having different manufacturers make it. It ties in with that level of we see components where we've got A grade, B grade, C grade, mm. D grade, E grade. True. So if you have light armor, A, B, C, D, E, you've got five manufacturers. And again, does it do a, is it a blade? Is it laser? Is it? Mm. It's true. You know, so different different roles of those armors, and so yeah. seeing you know seeing those different grades really does tie in with that as well. So, um, mm. and, and we well, know likely... CIG have in the past said you know different ships will only be able to have different components. Will that be different ships can only have different armor? And that could tie in with why Drake ships are always said to have paper thin mm. armor compared to everyone else. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I think like shields also fit into that equation as well, where they've you know talked about briefly i believe like different resistances to different kinds of weaponry so like scatter guns versus distortion weapons for example that mm. they might divide up the way you react to different ammunition uh based on whether it's taking damage to the shields or to, taking damage to armor and so different shield manufacturers may end up uh you know specializing in a certain time in a certain kind of defense yeah you've also just made me think of something too like if you've got a long range ship you're far more likely to have lasers and shields something like, you know, a long-range escort like the Redeemer is currently defaultly set at. But then say something like a Perseus that you and I have talked about in the past, Aragorn, where we've always thought it was a lot shorter range, mm. ballistics and armour. It all yeah. lines up. Like, it all makes sense all of a sudden. So, yeah. so why your carrier-born fighters are better mm. off with ballistics rather than yes. the, the Vanguard, which is your, your long-range tip-of-the-spear type ship? Yeah. So you've so, got this... As to that sustained fire thing I was talking about before, like, 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 mm. like, are, are you go like, like, uh, how do I put it? Like a Polaris going in for that tip of the spear first strike thing. It's got limited mm. ballistic torpedoes, essentially, right? It's the same thing. That's an extreme version. Torpedoes are an extreme version mm. of ballistics because they, they only have a couple of shots and they're in and out. That's it. And, um, you know, like uh, something like, say, a Gladiator is a good example. I would expect ships like a Gladiator or a smaller torpedo to have ballistics on it because it's not going to stay around. If it stays around, it's dead. All right? So that, that is an in-and-out vehicle. 
Um, and it also lines up with, um, you know, I think about it, things like the Eclipse. Remember how it's got those two ballistic guns on it? So, so, so this, I'm just saying this is lining up with manufacturer thinking, but then I look at things like the Redeemer where they put ballistics on the Redeemer and that doesn't line up, but you get my point. Um, I, exceptions with a rule. Yeah. And, well, I also think they want to put the ballistics in for that patch. So they just chucked it on that ship, but yeah. <laughs> but I think it also shows the options for player choice. So I, I, I always think of the way they used to sell the variants of ships. So the Aurora, you know, originally it was an Aurora with so many upgrade points that you could do. And then you, they'd showed us, you know, mm. an Aurora CL, an Aurora LN, an Aurora LX, an Aurora. And it was, hey, the LX is you've put in a, mm. a leather bound seat and you've got extra heart. Uh, but the ships were identical. The hull was identical apart from the ES. Mm. The hard points were identical. It was, it was really, the idea was you just, added the hard points on and as the variant as they changed the way they were doing it the variants became more bespoke in many ways but that would be kind of cool to see though down the line like um different mm. shops in the verse have their own spin on variants and stuff so like like it's like take a hornet but it's not just mm. the the hornet if you want to get the heart seeker you got to go to this place to get it but then you know take that ideology and basically mm. do it on anything. So, you know, you can uh, Terrapin. So there's one that uh, you, it only uses light armor because, you know, it's quicker and faster, more nimble. And then there's one that's yep. like, it's the tank. And, you know, instead of like two, two guns, it's got one big massive cannon gun, you know, whatever. You get where I'm yep. going with this. You, you, they could actually roll back into the game and do kind of custom variants to kind of sell to its players. Space? You yeah. I, I think with... Uh, with uh, the amount of hard points that they've put, the number of options that you have when it comes to picking components, it's clear that they care a lot about your personalization of your vehicle beyond just aesthetic differences, right? And so I think exactly that, where you will likely end up with two redeemers that behave nothing like each other. You know, they may share the hull, they may share, you know, the ability to put on certain paints, but beyond that, it might just be about it. Some people might choose to run basically no armor on their redeemer because mm. it's important to them to be fast. Um, so on and so forth. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Um, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. I, I will say this uh, bore fruit to me. I, I There's not often I have epiphanies. I had epiphanies again in this episode. And sometimes when we set out these episodes, like I think they're going to go nowhere. But it did. It went somewhere for me. So I'm, I'm quite happy that it, it, it bore some fruit. And I hope it bore fruit for you too as well. But um, yeah, l l closing thoughts. I guess I'll chuck it out to that. Like, is there anything you guys want to add? It certainly changes the view of the crucible. And mm. I think it just, in a sense, it also adds to why the crucible is such a, a needed ship for so many people. And yep. it's got a larger cargo hold than, you know, mm. I, I know when we looked at it, it's like, wow, that's a massive cargo hold. And mm. it's, yep. Makes and sense. This kind of, I think, adds to the reasons why it's got such a cargo hold. Kind of got to have a library of shit to repair people, doesn't it? Like, it's, uh, you know, yeah. a, bit, a bit of everything for every situation type of thing. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think, like, the, the Crucible is definitely what um, I thought of as well when it came to, to this episode and, and kind of what it made me think about. I think the Crucible is demonstrating its depth here. Like, you don't want to play, you know the equivalent of like mercy from overwatch where you just hold down left click and you heal you know mm. they want to add depth and variety to gameplay and this is how you make a support class feel valuable is that they get to make important decisions even before the act of actually repairing and mm. i think that that's it just speaks to the depth of even just report repair slash ship mm. medical gameplay yeah and it does like everything else that we've kind of covered in this game over all these years show the depth that they've gone to to design these systems which is just mm. which is fantastic it really, really is. And yes, I know this was a speculatory episode, but um, you follow it through, there's a logical chain of thought. Agra, is there anything you wanted to add, honestly, before we kind of move on or, or wrap no, up? I, I, I think even though, as you said, it, it's speculatory, we, we are speculating. But I think when you look at what CIG have said about which manufacturers could have which components and what they've said about armour and, and manufacturers and mm. the fact that, you know, we also see the cutter being a totally undrake ship in terms of the way it fits. It's got, you know, the, the weapons are undrake in terms of the, the balance. The armor mm -hmm. is undrake compared to the balance. It also seems to say it, maybe it's not just manufacturer based, but also manufacturer slash ship based. So yeah. uh, it's a lot more nuanced than I think 
we were ever thinking. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's, it's, as Shrek would say, it's got layers. It's, it's a big onion. Yeah, it's an onion. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I agree with you. It, it is, uh, it has opened my eyes. Like a lot of the time when we deep dive on these topics, uh, you start going into it and you unravel things. And yeah, I think I've, we've unraveled some stuff today. And I, I think that's what I'd ask in the comments. What would you guys think of what we've talked mm. about today? Because it's definitely opened my eyes to how complex this have, game is. Have we, have we, wandered down the alleyway and, and been mugged by speculation or are we onto something mm. uh space what would you like to hear from people in the comments yeah exactly that and I, I do wonder if this makes people more excited for uh for repair or less you know some people might prefer the simplicity mm. um I, i'd be curious to see what people enjoy yeah and and it, it also makes me start to wonder like if this is how compact like with all professions right as i learn how complicated these are and laid i start to apply these to other things like like how mm. how like let's repair us for vehicles as is medical is like how complicated can they make medical you know so it makes yeah. my mind wander how, is what i'm trying to say yeah. how simple was mining when it first started and how complex has it become in terms of the yeah. components and levels and things and i don't think we're anywhere near finished with mining Hundred percent. You know, we've 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 got more things coming. So yeah, yeah. All right. With that, then, um, where can people find Don't you, forget. Space Tech? Wait, wait, Space Tech. Where can people find oh. you on the interwebs, mate? Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm just on YouTube for now uh, at Space Tech. So at Space Hyphen Tech, if you want to use the new YouTube handles. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my channel largely focuses on statistics and deep dive breakdowns of the ships and FPS weapons in Star mm -hmm. Citizen as the game plays today. So if you're looking to get, you know, that competitive advantage in, in Star Marine or, you know, you want to just be as efficient as possible when it comes to taking down a bunker, you know, I'm, I think I've got a good resource there for so, you. So the best um, best guns to use, um, you know, against particular people, different armor types, things like that, yeah? Exactly that. Yep. Like wh how many shots to the head with an FS9 for a heavy helmet? Mm. I got that answer for you. <laughs> cool. There you go. If you like our friend John Citizen, it's how many shots to the ankle. Uh, he, he, he <laughs> he's crawling around. No, I'm just kidding. John, John, John will get me for that. Don't you worry. All right. Um, with that, if you like this type of content, don't forget to uh, like, uh, subscribe. And as I said earlier, um, we have a lot of people that have been telling us they've not been getting our videos. So mm -hmm. make sure you ring that notification bell. Agrid, you want to add the other stuff that you're better at than yep. I? Don't forget. Don't forget to join us on Discord. Uh, Discord is always open. If you need help with your fleets, join the Discord. Help my uh, fix my fleet channel as well. If you want to go that extra mile and support us in what we do and help replace equipment that's dying or died, uh, there is also Patreon, or you can hit that um, yeah. the like button that appears on YouTube mm -hmm. and whatever it is, uh, and buy a coffee or whatever. So uh, <laughs> it's going to it's going to be our grid, our grid. Old man viewfinder Hurston, I think. I, I keep yes, calling right. him viewfinder because it keeps bringing that text up on the screen the last couple of days. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It, it's something's got, something's breaking that, that we clearly need to try and fix. And Well, Space Tech, thank you for joining us. Um, is there anything you thank want to you. add before we sign off? No, just, just that this was a great experience and I, I can't wait to see what people say. We'll try and get you back again another time then. It was yep. great having you. All right. Well, he's been Space Tech, the voice in the void. He's been our grid. And he's been executed. And we're mm. out of here. Catch you in the next one. Say goodbye, Space. <laughs>